So you're one of those people that have no idea how to get out of bottom mount. That big heavy purple belt puts you there every single round and you just can't find some success. Well, what we're gonna do in this video is completely revolutionize your mount escapes so that you don't have that problem going forward. Enjoy. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of escaping uh, from the mount position. We're gonna look at two escapes. Um, they will be based on what our opponent is doing on top of us, whether their weight is forward or whether their weight's backwards. And then we're gonna look at immediately turning that into some offense. The, the main problem is, is that when you escape mount or side control or half guard or any of the bottom pinning positions, let's say that I start with an elbow escape, I start to walk my hips out and away, I get to this position and NASA immediately hikes this leg up and over and then he starts to go back into side control. He gets my knees away from my chest, he puts knee on belly and then he puts me straight back into mount. This is a pretty common thing that, has up, uh, that happens for intermediate and beginner people because they don't recognize that they need to figure out a way to turn mount escaping or escaping in general straight into offense. So we're going to look at that problem today and then solve that for you guys. But just as a general rule uh, or, or general idea of how we're going to escape this position, if NASA comes forwards chest to chest and he gets a cross face on me, I do not want to ever allow him get an underhook. So on the far side where he has the ability to gain an underhook, I actually want to start to pull my elbow into my ribs as much as possible and keep this nice and tight in between his adductor and where my rib cage is. If he tries to go for an underhook here, I'm just going to bump him forwards with my knee and his tailbone. I'm not going to try and drive my knee through his tailbone. I'm just going to lightly bump him forwards. And so we can play that game of stopping him being able to get more of an advantage rather than where he is currently. So most people think that when you want to perform a kipping escape, you actually have to go uh, away from the cross face. Now that can be true if they're ripping your head off and turning your chin all the way down to the side. It could be very difficult to start to kip this way. But what we're going to do is use his cross face against him today. If I try and kip NASA to my left, he's got a base of support over there with his right hand. So if I try and send him that way, he posts every single time. If NASA's not allowed to let go of the cross face and I kip him over my right shoulder, all I do is bridge, his hips fall because he has no base of support out of there. So we're gonna use that to our advantage. So what we need to do to start a kipping escape is we need our elbows in nice and tight and our hands, the heel of our hands placed firmly on his hips. I don't want you guys using your fingers. A violent hip switch here will wrist lock you and you will definitely hurt your wrist and you'll have to stop training for a couple of weeks. So what we're gonna do, I actually find this a little bit difficult sometimes. So I, I find that popping my hips up sends his legs down a little bit so I can get my elbows in. Uh, the more slender individuals won't have a problem with this, but if you do have a problem getting your elbows in, just pop your hips up a little bit and then glue your elbow to your ribs. And what we're gonna do to start is take him over that left side. We're not actually intending on kipping him that side. We're intending on releasing the cross face pressure if he does have a good cross face and he's turning my head to the left. Yeah, exactly. So I'm actually gonna go with this by bridging him over this direction and look what happened to the, the elbow underneath my head. It started to come off the floor. He's not able to post on this hand just yet. We're gonna send him that direction because he's got a limited base of support over this direction. So what I really wanna do when I first initiate this bridge is try and reach my right knee towards the middle of his tailbone and round and tuck my entire body. This takes the ability for him to uh, flatten me out and basically ruin the kip away because I've already created a sufficient rounding of my spine underneath him. And this, this is pretty much how you escape every position is rounding out your spine so they can't grab onto you. So I take my initial bridge away from the cross face and I round my entire body. Maybe I don't get enough room to kip him off, but I can start to take him in the opposite direction where he has no base. So I'm gonna kip this direction, see if it works. It probably won't. And then I'm gonna take my hips and knees all the way over the other side where he doesn't have a base so that I can start to get my knees and elbows on the inside. I'm gonna bring my bottom knee through. I'm gonna bring my top knee around the corner so we can start to get into the, uh, the very start of an Arumi Ashigurami to begin with. So we're down here, his weight's forwards on top of us. His weight isn't backwards. We'll look at backwards in the next sequence. He's got a decent cross face and he's got a posted hand out this way. I need to start to pop my hips up and get my elbows tucked in nice and tight to my ribs. If my elbows are flared, I'm not gonna be able to create enough distance with our hips to bring my knees through the gap. So I pop my hips up, get my hands in nice and tight. Remember, I'm using the heels of my hands, not my fingertips. It's kind of awkward to use your fingertips here anyway, but we're, we're protecting ourselves from a wrist locking situation. So I'm gonna bridge and start to take him over this direction to start to get him bringing his weight back over here. 
once he does decide to bring his weight back over there, as he starts to defend, I keep my body nice and round and tight. Once I get to this position, I'm trying to tip my left knee towards his tailbone. And once I have enough space to bring my le uh, right knee through the middle, then I can start to bring my left knee around the corner and then I can start to put myself into a rumiashi. So we've gone from a mounted position into something that's a little bit more neutral or even offensive for me. Let's give that a go. We'll look at the next one after. Is that I wanna be taking NASA's weight, not necessarily side to side, completely laterally, but over the shoulder of, of which I'm going. It's gonna give me a bigger distance between our tailbones uh, so that I can start to bring my knees in. So I go through all the same procedures. I start to get my elbows on the inside. I tuck them towards my ribs. I realize that he's basing out there. So I start to bridge onto my side. I'm actually wanting to be kipping this entire time because if this first escape works, great. I don't have to go to the second one. It's just the likelihood that it does because of his posted hand here, his ability to drive his left knee back down to the mat is really good. But if I realize that's where he wants to go, no problem, I still maintain all the inside real estate. So I'm actually trying to take him over my right shoulder at this stage so that you can see pulling my knees and elbows together makes it a lot easier. If I do the exact same thing and I just try and go over my right hip, for instance, this direction, I go here, I kip, you're kind of ending up in this position where you haven't created any extra distance between his tailbone and the top of your knee. Whereas if I take him over my shoulder, this direction, you can now see that there's a huge gap in between here and now we can start to get into a rumiashi. So the second variation of the escape is where we go both knees in and some of you guys were already doing that. Um, both are fine, but they lead you down different paths of attack when you finish the sequence into offense. So when I do my kipping escape, I go to the left, I come back to the right. It's completely okay to bring both knees and elbows back on the inside. But for obvious reasons, this is butterfly guard and it's not an Arimiyashi Garami. So practice both of those details now where you're taking them over the shoulder and kipping all the way into their tailbone. And then if you haven't, bring both knees inside. If you have brought both knees inside, just alternate between the two, do one of each, and then we'll go back into the next sequence. My studious little astronaut. All right, so instead of them head hunting this time, we're gonna think about them putting their weight a little bit further back into the hips. And it's gonna make it a lot more difficult for us to start to get this portion of the move initiated. And it's gonna be a lot more difficult for us to start to kip because if their hips are centered far back and down and they're glued to ours, it, it doesn't matter how strong you are, it doesn't matter how much you bridge, you'll actually just end up exhausting yourself. You try and like disconnect there, see how I can't actually make any disconnect from uh, the, the start of my femur to the end of my femur is gonna be quite difficult. So we're just gonna change the method of escape. If you go for a kip and you're not really aware, like say if you're a white belt or a blue belt, and you're not really aware of where their weight's situated and you try and kip, don't just continue down that path and exhaust yourself, that's silly. Go to the next thing. And the next thing is an inside knee elbow escape. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same thing of getting our knees and elbows on the inside. But when we realize his weight is backwards, we're not just gonna continue down the same path and exhaust ourselves. We're gonna to start to turn up on our side trying to connect our left knee and elbow in this instance. I'm gonna walk my hips back and away, keeping a frame on the inside of his left, uh, of, of his right knee, so that my left knee can start to come through. Then I use my right elbow if I wanna to go to butterfly guard and keep my knees on the inside, or I simply shift my hips or my shoulders out back and away into a rimiyashi on this leg. So, same grips as the kipping. I go to kip, but I realize his weight's so far back down and away that I can't actually make it work without exhausting myself. Because even if I do make it work, he's just gonna remount me again anyway. So I start to turn up on my side. I put my left knee and elbow together as much as I possibly can. And if I, I won't actually be able to bring my left knee through the gap at this stage. But you'll notice what his left leg is doing. It's completely off the floor here. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and move my hips out and away. I'm gonna to start to bring my left knee through the middle, connecting my left knee and elbow, and I can bring my right knee up around the corner into Rumiashi, or I connect my right knee and elbow and go into butterfly guard. Let's give that a go. 